Good evening, War Cry fanatics, and welcome back to the Miniature Stash. We got a trippy battle report tonight as the Stormcast Eternals look for revenge after their last encounter with the Gloom Spite Yitz. Round one hero phase. The gloom spike gets rolled two singles for their initiative and a quad for their ability. They're going to elect to save their magic dice for the next round. And the storm cast eternals roll an impressive three doubles for their abilities. They too will elect to use their magic dice in the second round. To start off round one, the Gloom Spike Git Netter is going to move into a position to block off the pathway to the objective marker on top of the mushroom. And with the three, the Netter takes no damage from his huge jump. The Evocator is going to move into a position and take control of the first objective marker for the Stormcast Eternal. The Gloom Spike Git with the spear is going to do a wait wait ensuring he keeps control over the objective marker the lord arcanum is going to use the rush to get to the other side of the board to put himself in advantage for striking in the next round with the lord arcanum in sight the gloom spike gets is going to draw his bow back and unleash a crit Oh, there's three damage. The Gloom Spike, its shaman, is up next, and he's going to unleash Rampage. He's going to do a double move to jump over towards the lower Arcanum, and he does one damage on the fall. Next, he's going to unleash two attacks, and he deals six damage towards the Lord Arcanum. Round two, hero phase. The Gloom Spike gets roll one single for their initiative, a double and a triple for their abilities. They're gonna to elect to use one magic dice to turn their initiative into two singles. Up next in the hero phase is a storm cast eternal and they roll two singles for their initiative and two doubles for their abilities. They're going to elect to use one magic dice and turn their double fives into a triple. As both warbands have two singles for their initiatives, we're going to have a roll off for first activation. The Gloom Spike gets get a one and the Storm Cast get a six for first activation in round two. And to start off round two for the Storm Cast Eternal, the Lord Arcanum is going to unleash Shatter Spirit Blast and deal five damage to both the Shaman and the Netter. And for the first activation, the Lord Arcanum is going to attack the Gloom Spike Gets Shaman and deals 12 damage and he kills the Shaman for the Gloom Spike Gets. With one more activation, the Lord Arcanum is then going to turn his sights on the Netter and attacks and deals nine damage and the netter is dead as well. What a activation for the Lord Arcanum, folks. First up for the Gloom Spike gets, we have a netter moving into position to hopefully catch some unsuspecting Stormcast Eternals. The Stormcast Secretor moves in on the gets and swings its great mace and deals 11 damage, killing the Gloom Spike Gets Spear. We have another Gloom Spike Gets running in over to get towards the second objective marker that's being held by the Stormcast Eternals.
the gloom spike gets continue to move towards the second objective marker. Seeing a buildup of Gloom Spike gets the indicator moves over and makes an attack and deals 10 damage, killing the Gloom Spike Get Spear. And from the far corner, the Gloom Spike Get Shooter is going to take two pot shots into the Evocator Prime and only does three damage. Round three, hero phase. The Gloom Spike get roll three singles for their initiative and a triple for their ability. They're going to use up both magic dice, turning their initiatives into four singles and their ability into a quad. And next we have the Storm Cast Eternals and they roll... To start off round three, the sequitor is quickly going to destroy the shooter in front of him and then move over and tie up the three squig hoppers. To start off for the gloom spike gets the squig hopper boss is going to use the ability stab him good. He's then going to attack the sequitor and deal 12 damage. And for the second activation, it's going to do another attack and oh, deal no damage. Next up, the sequitor is going to unleash the ability Onslaught. He attacks the squig hopper, dealing 10 damage and gets a crit, knocking him off the mushroom. And on the fall, the squig hopper takes an additional three damage. For its second attack, the sequitor is going to go into the squig hopper boss and deal six more damage. Looking for some action, we got a squig hopper that's going to attack the sequitor. Deals six damage, and he's going to attack again. Deals another six damage and kills the sequitor. Seeing the squig hopper fall from the mushroom, the Lord Arcanum moves in quickly and deals an attack and does two damage. Next up, we got a shooter that's going to take a couple more pot shots into the evocator and does a total of four damage. The evocator, shrugging up the arrow attack, moves over towards the netter, takes an attack and does six damage. Trying to get away from the evocator, the netter disengages and moves closer towards the objective marker. Seeing the gloom spike gets making their way towards the objective marker, the knight and canter rushes over to take control and then attacks the closest netter, dealing six damage and killing him. With very little options left, the netter disengages from the evicator and tries to make its way over to the objective marker. And closing the end of the round, the last evicator rushes over towards the objective marker, ensuring the storm cast eternals have control. And at the end of round three, the storm cast Eternals have taken control of both objective markers. The squig hoppers were too busy attacking instead of moving on to the second objective, letting the lone sequitur take control and giving the storm cast Eternals the win. If you enjoyed tonight's battle report, hit the like button and leave a comment below about the gameplay. And for all you War Cry fanatics, subscribe to the channel for more battle reports. All here on the Miniature Stats.